Yo ho ho sha! What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joku DMD, and I'm here for the third episode of In Joku's Pants, episode three, with my with a very special guest, probably arguably the most specially guest that I could even have in my pants. My very own sensei, Miguel Cagillas. Did I say that right? Cagillas. Cagillas. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hey, take it easy, man. <laughs> take it easy, man. Hey, take it easy, man. <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah, so if you guys have seen the first two episodes, I watched both of them in these glasses and I couldn't see anything of what's going on. No, but seriously, I gotta take these off. I'm gonna pass away. Anyway, this is go. the third episode. If you guys haven't seen an episode of Injoku's Pants, they're the most entertaining content on the internet yet. Uh, but they're gonna get more entertaining because there's more coming. And this is the third one. But uh, yeah, kind of what we do here is we talk about stuff and then um, Miguel, as you can see, he's in his own pants right now. And by the end of the episode, he's gonna be in my pants. And we're actually gonna do, this is gonna be a two-parter. Again, we're gonna do part one on the Joku Shoku here. And then part two, you can check out on El Topo Loco's page because Miguel is the Capitan, El Capitan of El Topo Loco, which uh, I am a honorary member, but I did have to form the Joe crew as you can see by my jersey. But we're all kind of squad here. Chillin'. So uh, yeah, this is this is Miguel. He is my sensei, it's true. Hi. <laughs> uh, yo, so uh, we're gonna get get you in some pants, man. This is the Word. Plan. I was peeping I was peeping that 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 broly fabric right there. The broly one? one? This yeah, one? Yeah. Dude, this one's fire. You already got it figured out. I think this one looks really good. This oh, is one yeah. of the coolest fabrics I've ever made. Shorties. You want some shorts? You want capris? You want shorts? You want long shorts? You want short shorts? You want like what do you want? Because it's your birthday coming up, so you know, gotta get you in Dude, the right rock some. attire. Let's rock some short shorts. Short shorts? You want like to like here? I want them like. Or you want them like? I here. want them like right here. Like I'm trying to. All right, you got you. you. Hey, <laughs> I'm with it, man. I can't do it. Can't do it. Oh, can't yeah. do it. I mean, All you right. already made me a few pants, and I got some shorts, so yeah, it's nice, short to shorts. Some, nice to have some variety. Yeah. Can, like this fabric looks rad. Whoa. We drippy, man. Hell yeah, man. Um, so I feel like, you know, a lot of people are probably, uh, you know, every single person that's watching this right now is probably asking themselves, how in the world did this man get to be your sensei? Um, how did you get so lucky to have Miguel as your own sensei? This man hyped me up too much, man. Well, <laughs> well, it all started. It all started at a little gaming store called Greg's Games in New Jersey. And it's actually kind of funny because the guy that's recording and editing this whole thing, Steve, shout out to Steve. I know you don't like to promote yourself in these videos, but you do a great job with them and thank you. And if anybody ever needs the best cameraman on the face oh, yeah. of planet Steve Earth. Steve is a very beautiful man. Very beautiful man. You want me to describe him for you? Nice beard, <laughs> beautiful eyes. <laughs> Wait, do, do you do you actually, do you know how Steve and I met originally? Um, Was it Reddit? Yeah, it was Reddit. So like I, I lived in Phoenix and I started playing DBS in Phoenix. And then like when I was gonna move back here, I was like, I made a post on Reddit and I was like, yo, does anybody play DBS in New Jersey? And Steve answered me. And we, I think, I don't remember, did, did we get each other's contact info or we were like DMing through Instagram? Or no, we were direct messaging through Reddit, I think. He's nodding, so that means that's what we were doing. Uh, we were DMing through, through Reddit and he was like, yo, come check out this place, come check out this place. And I was like, you know, just getting settled in the world. And I was like, I don't know how to get there. It's a drive on like a weeknight and I gotta look in people's mouths all day tomorrow. So I never really ended up making it to um, to the locals where you guys, where you started playing. And then eventually I looked on the Bandai website and saw that Greg's game was, was on there. So I was like, oh, I'll go check out Greg's. And I walk into Greg's and um, Steve is like, you're the guy from Reddit. And I was like, what? Uh, maybe, maybe I am. And he was like, no, you're, you're definitely the guy from Reddit. Like you're very identifiable. And that is not, not, I can't really argue with that very well. It's accurate. So it's true. I was the guy from Reddit. And I had, I saw like a, um, there was some post about, I don't remember what the deck was. It was like, it was playing the, the Vegeta arrival secret rare and B, and Zeno button to untap. It was blue, it was green, blue. yellow, Broly. Was it Broly? It was Broly Button, yeah. Yeah, Broly Button. I think it, I think that's right. So I I just I just saw a list for that, 
and everybody was that was the time when i think like getting into the game and like getting like entry level decks started getting really expensive yeah it was like a th like twelve hundred dollars for all the cards in that deck and i was like oh i have all of these i, I should like just... grab it for search format i think right yep that was right before search format yeah because that was shortly before the um Chicago Regional, which is where I got my first invite for Nats, which is next weekend, because that was 2019, all this stuff got delayed. But anyway, I brought that deck and I kind of did pretty well with it against everybody I played. And then I sat, sat across from this guy and I remember, um, I think it was, uh, I think it was, wait, who, Chris, it was Chris. He was like, he was like, oh, you guys are gonna be really good friends. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right, people don't tell me who I'm gonna be friends with, first of all. And he was Chris like, knew, he was like, knew. he was like, you guys are, you guys are like the protagonist and antagonist of like an anime. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right, whatever. I was like, this guy looks kind of cool. You know, maybe he looks, he's got some style going on. You had your headphones on, you're jamming. And we started playing and you were playing blue, yellow Broly. Yeah. Which was the list I ended up playing at Chicago. And when we played, I was sitting there and I was like, dude, I, I've never seen somebody turn cards into what you turn them into. And that, I think like, if you guys ever play with like a variety of people, I'm getting goose pimples just thinking about it. If you, I mean, it's cool as tits in here. <laughs> it is cool. So. But if you guys play with people, like a variety of people, you'll <laughs> see that certain people get more value out of cards than other people when they play them. And there's a certain point where when people get a certain amount of value out of that card, you're like, whoa, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. And they were not, you didn't like completely wax me, but you closed me out every game. There was no way that I was winning either of those games. And I knew like right then and there, I was like, dude, I want to learn how to play like this guy. <laughs> and I think I pretty much straight up, I got, I got your info. I think right that, was, after. that was actually the beginning when I actually began to uh, understand the game a little bit better from, I, I play a lot with Johnny. Mm -hmm. So like he has taken my game to the next level. So I got to give him. Johnny has that. really, really good card sense. I mean, like I, Johnny and I actually have been training. Johnny's sitting right over there. We didn't have an extra mic for him, but Johnny's going to be on the next episode. So there will be another episode of this and it's gonna be featuring Johnny and it'll be post Nats. So we're actually, we're prepping for Nats right now. And this is probably gonna come out right after Nats because I'm planning on talking about stuff in my deck and I've been trying to not talk about it too much before Nats. But yeah, I think like right after that game, I was like, dude, like I wanna learn how to play like you. And um, I hit you up and we just became friends like pretty quick. I think we clicked like real dang I think quick. Yeah, I came over here like a couple days after. Yeah, you came over and chilled and we played some games and um, and it was funny. Joyce was like, Joyce was like, do you think if you guys didn't play cards, like you'd have other stuff in common? And I was like, I don't know. I feel like like kind of maybe, I don't know. Like Chill, we're definitely, weird. we're definitely hanging because we play cards. But since then, I mean, that was like years ago now. Uh, not that many, like two years ago, something like that. I think a little more because I've been over here for two of your birthdays? Yeah. Yeah, but dude, we're like brothers now. Yeah, I mean, I think we it's... like, we hang out all the time. Is like, I've learned so much. The, honestly, the only reason that I that I did well at that Chicago event, and I think the only re reason I continue to do well at events is because of you and Johnny and like what I've learned about playing from both of you guys. I call Johnny my senpai, but, but because I think it's funny because he's like a few years younger than me. So I think it's funny to call somebody that's younger than me senpai. I don't know if I ever explained that to you, Johnny. But both you guys are basically my senseis. It's not really, you know, I've learned a lot from both of you. But I can't let Johnny get too big of a head of himself because if he does, then he'll let his aggro soul take control and he'll turn everything <laughs> sideways and he won't let anything open for Kynegate and then he'll lose Nat. So I can't let him, I can't let him get too much of a head about being a, you know, full sensei. But, um, but yeah, dude, I mean, like, that was, uh, that was a couple of years ago. I've gotten you in a number of my pants now, but I wasn't, I wasn't really making content for the game back then at all. I was just like playing because I didn't really want to make any content before I felt like I could actually play the game. I don't really like watching the content of people that aren't like- I don't even think we had a, I don't think me and Johnny even created a yeah, local think, yet. I think you guys had just made the team. And I remember Johnny, Johnny was like talking about like, yeah, like we got like, you guys, you gotta chill with like who you're laying on the team, bro. Like we gotta have the squad. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Miguel's like, yeah, these are my homies. Like we're all homie homies, you know? Homie. So <laughs> homie. Um, and then, uh, and then eventually, you know, I, I was I was on the team, but then um, kind of wanted to do my own thing, team wise. What do you want to do for pockets for these? Speaking of which, hmm. I got these Doctor Strange pockets. You want some Doctor Sounds Strange? Sounds good. Pockets? Sounds strange. I like strange. It. Strange. 
Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's kind of, that's the, that's the legend of, and, um, is there a bottle over that says sensei? Yeah. Yeah. You want to hold this? I think that's I probably, like, what the hell? that's probably a good idea. This was the whiskey that I drank in uh, Hawaii last year. I brought the bottle back cause it really impacted me in a positive way. Sensei whiskey. Sensei. Sensei. I was hanging out with Konishki and his wife Chie and I was just cranking on that sensei. Cool. Um, but uh, but yeah, what's cool actually is like, you know, I feel like Nats is coming up in like a couple days, like less than a week away at this point. At this point, next week, we're gonna be like hours into the first day. Yeah, the boys Swiss, been grinding. Which is gonna be exciting, but it's cool because like, I don't know, if you guys watch this show, I think you are aware of how much I like the colors blue and yellow. And what was cool was when I met you, I was already playing, I was playing Broly High to Mastery previously, but then once we started playing, you got me on the blue yellow Broly and Broly and Goku are kind of like my favorite characters. So it was cool to play like a blue yellow Broly deck with some Goku stuff in it and do well with it at an event. And at the event, I also, I had my mirror taken out of my list cause I forgot to put it on the list and still somehow managed to, it was burning the battering. I think that's also what really got it. But through going through Nats, like I think Johnny and I were playing a bunch and I was testing out Gogeta a lot. And I was like, maybe I just need to play Gogeta cause it's like really good, but I'm just not a black player. That's the reality of it. And you were you're like- not an aggro player either. I feel like you're more like a main range you control player. Yeah, get up here so I can give you a hug and Go test your waist up. Oh yeah, rock that. But um, but you were like, you were like, dude, you should play Soul Striker. Oh, why are you watching me, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to get in this man's pants. <laughs> How's that tightness? You want it looser? That's good. Tighter? That's, That's good. Fine. You want to give it a little, see what it tastes like? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> see what it tastes like. <laughs> um, but yeah, cause you were like, you're like, dude, I think you should play Soul Striker. And I think the thing like about us, when you're kind of helping guide me with stuff is like, I don't want to just copy exactly what you do. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I look up to you and I look to what you're doing, but I like to take my own approach to it. And I mean, I love Kefla. I feel like Kefla is just one of my favorite characters. So to be able to play a blue, yellow Soul Striker deck with Kefla in it, just feels like it's really calling me. And at the end of the day, like, Card's pretty crazy. It's I mean, a good it's a good card. I think there's ways to counter it, but it's strong. Yeah. It's definitely meta defining. It's um, mainly just yellow with all the new crap it has. It's just like yeah. it's hard to even have like establish any like boss Yeah, it's it's right a pretty now. wild toolbox. And and yeah. you just picked you just built Icarus today and started playing and it was like crazy watching you how quickly you figured out how to master that deck. The but, deck is just like a bunch of booby traps now and then like Basically, yeah. Yeah, and and the other thing I noticed like when you're playing is like there's a concept I have in my head. It's like when you play, you want to maximize your energy and like yeah. use what you can of your energy. But at the same time, like it's also okay to leave energy up and not use it, especially in the games that sometimes, go long. Sometimes the best play you can do is to not make a play at all. Exactly. Yeah. You get your draw and totally. that's it. And that's, that's basically what happened in that last match that we played was like, I didn't play enough to set up the play that was like, you identified it immediately. You're like, I'm in a checkmate now. Yeah. There was no, and we. I think we played, what happened, we, we were testing Icarus and we played three games, I got clapped every game. Then we made some changes, then we played one more, and then we made some changes to the deck. And then after we made the changes, I was able to see how to make the differences in the game where I was actually able to get a game off you. Yeah, that matchup's pretty rough for Soul Striker, I think. I think it's like a 60-40 matchup. Yeah. And if Icarus wins dice roll even, yeah, and it's really, you're not going to go into a game two. It's going to be one It's because, like, it can keep up with your, like, draw power, as well as, like, any boss monster that you play is getting tapped immediately because of, like, the new Goku, uh, what's it called again? The, the Steadfast. The, the Steadfast card's insane. insane. And then anything and it, that you and rest, it rest. It rests on the card coming in. It doesn't rest. Yeah. It's not like play this card. It's, and a, rest it's a better crusher ball. It's yeah. a power creep crusher ball. It's just, yeah. like, and then on your turn, you just kill it with Turlist. The new Turlist is super cracked. Cards bomb. For 200, you just get yeah. to pop two things or pop one thing and then draw a card. Yeah, it's and wild. Then it's 20k double striker, deals with unisons. It's totally wild. Applies pressure. Um, so I guess I have a question for you. Uh, uh, how, I don't know anything about like how you got into the game. I don't think we ever talked about that. Like when did you start playing? What was like, what's the story of Miguel, send my sensei Miguel getting into the Dragon Ball Super card game? Well, I used to play a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! So like Yu-Gi-Oh was like my main game. And then right before like Lynx came out, I was like, they're doing way too much. I was like, I'm just not feeling this game anymore. 
So I sold all my stuff and then like stopped playing card games. But then there was like, I feel like- When was that? Uh, that was before the game came out. Like right? No, I mean like when were you playing Yu-Gi-Oh? When did you start playing Yu-Gi-Oh? I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh when it came out. So I was playing Yu-Gi-Oh for a long time. Oh, so like when you were, when you were young and stuff? Yeah. Cool. I mean, I used to go to regionals and stuff too, but. Um, and you guys never met through Yu-Gi-Oh? You and Johnny never met? I don't know. I'm pretty sure Johnny clapped me at an ARG for DBS one time though. <laughs> I don't think he remembers that though. I think he was playing a... Uh... Yeah, I, I He's think- He's playing veggies. You were playing veggies. And I think I was playing like a... Uh... Oh no, dude, that was a long time ago. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop trying to remember that. But anyways, so I always viewed card games as like a like an outlet and like it's great you meet people, you make friends and it's it's great when you're struggling with anything like mental, you know, like depression and stuff like that. And uh, I felt like when I didn't play card games, like I feel like a part of my life was kind of missing. So I think I, uh, I met up with somebody at a card shop in Brick and then uh, he introduced me to DBS and then I've just been playing ever since. Well, what's cool about, what's cool about, you know, what you're talking about with like, the kind of like the mental health component of, of being able to play a game like this is like, it's not only just playing a game, right? Like you're a part of community. Like, as it's like good, a family. As good of friends as we are, and Johnny too, and Steve also, like none of us would have been friends if it wasn't for this game. Like yeah. we just wouldn't have met. We're not in the same like, there's no other niche of life that would have brought us together. And like the amount of like memories and good times and like fun stuff that we've done together that we're not ever gonna forget for the rest of our lives, regardless of whether this game exists or not, that that's really valuable, I think. And on top of that, like, I think what's really cool is like, this game is, right? Like building a deck is like building a puzzle. And then like, every time you play that puzzle, you get to like, solve the answers of it and you're continuously like solving math problems. remember like you were taking Are a math you a philosophizer class. now yeah, yeah I'm a philosophizer <laughs> when you were taking that math class and i was talking to you about stuff you know i was talking to you about the the different problems you're working on and stuff and i was like dude like you're actually really nasty at all this math already because you do it in the game constantly like you're constantly calculating stuff and like you create this puzzle and make it solve itself and it's really rewarding to build something and have it kind of function in a way putting like putting you. time into decks is like huge like deck mastery is real like yeah even sure. um even back when i was playing like i i think like i started to get better at this game when i actually like put time into a deck that wasn't a meta deck and then i took it to an event that was when i started playing oob which was when i taught my first event and i was like nobody's playing this but it beats all the good decks you know what yeah. i mean it's a good deck why yeah. is nobody playing it because everybody's you know everybody rides to rides the wave usually plays the best decks you know? Yeah, I think that's what's really exciting about like this uh, this Soul Striker list right now for me is like I'm sure if there was you know if the set did come out a while ago like people are going to be playing these cards they're all good cards it's not a mystery that it's like the Vegeta Kaba and the Kefla like they're they're good cards is not there isn't a, there isn't much that's written on them that says bad card you know like, anything that can interrupt uh, battle and have like interaction with your opponent's you know offensive cards yeah is just huge. really strong um, but. Uh, What's interesting about it is um, like the, uh, what, what's cool is these cards haven't really been put to the test yet competitively. They, you know, people are probably testing with them and, and I think the, you know, the writing's on the wall about what's good, but there isn't the data out there to say like these poor cards perform better than these cards and these cards are indexed that are performing really well. So to be able to, I know a lot of people are upset that Bandai is putting out a set the day before Nats, but for me, it's really exciting because like, I it love these cards. It makes the game cards. fresh. You don't want to, I mean, it's sort of like an open format, but I feel like the format's also kind of solved. You know what you're going to expect to see. You know, you know you're going to see Cell Surge. You know you're gonna see Gogeta Xeno. You right. know you're gonna see Soul Striker. You know you're gonna see Icarus. Right. And then random red decks, which I think red is probably in the worst spot right now. But don't sleep on red. If you're not ready for like a red aggro deck and your deck doesn't perform well against it, you're gonna get. Yeah, off. yeah, totally. So. Totally. Yeah. So I um. But what's cool? Have I have I ever told you my theory about the heart of the cards? I think you told me this the other day. But go ahead. Yeah, we were talking Let about the people it, here. Like, for for everybody else that's listening, um, I'm sure if you you know if you play card games. You may have heard this theory about the heart of the cards. 
and the heart of the cards, what I understood it as was kind of like people saying, yeah, like when you just draw that card that you need, you know, it's like you need that play and you like top deck that card that's the exact card that you need. And in testing with Johnny, actually the last couple days, like it's kind of like insane how many cards have just like come to me that like I just needed to win games. And one of the things Johnny says, like when he draws a card he needs is he'll be like, oh, I'm nasty. And I love it because like that concept of like, be you're nasty at the game because you're so lucky. But I think there's something deeper to that in that like- He sound nasty. You, you, you also like, do you remember like that play that we were playing and I was like, okay, wait, wait, wait. I needed to ape before I swung or whatever. I needed to ape before I swing with the Keffel because I knew that I had more Keffels in my deck. Yeah. I knew there were there were six, there were like eight cards in my deck and two of them were Keffless. So we could likelihood... probably explain that sequence where you put me in like a checkmate. Yeah, we yeah. We had a very long game. So he had three energy open. He was at three life. I was, at, I was charging to 10 energy. My goal was I was going to play Fu. And then, and then he was probably going to God Ceiling because he had a unison up and then I was in a cooler. But I swung to try to get him down to two and then he went up to five energy. So he put me in a checkmate. So even if I did counter, he'd have eight open. So it was like weird because I'd counter his counter, but then he'd counter me again. So it's like, it just it put me in a weird situation where I couldn't win the game. And then next turn he had 17. So. Right. And and what was, what there was, uh, there was one point where, um, sorry if I spoke a little too fast. No, no, no. I mean, I think that makes total sense, but Oh, so what I was saying about this heart of the cards thing is I feel like when you, I'm, I'm a creative person. I like creating things. It's like what I love to do. And it's I think like, like baby. I think it really is. And I think like in the, in the human experience, right? Like you don't, at the end of life, like what do you have? Like you don't have anything, right? Like you leave your bodies here, your whatever makes us kick and tick go somewhere. But like in the time that you exist, you have the opportunity to create stuff. And that stuff that you create will continue to exist. Maybe it'll get thrown away, whatever. But like, even just with these like clothes and stuff, like there's gonna be somebody like 60 years from now yeah. that has some pair of shorts that I made for you that may your be related to you. Your essence continues to exist on this plane regardless. Exactly. And and when you deck build, you create, there's exactly. a component of that in deck building. There's yeah. a creative aspect to building something. And I think like, I have like this hat, right? Like this hat, I didn't physically make this hat, but I met somebody at a place that makes hats and I drew the picture for them. I was like, this is what I want. I want these colors, I want this shape. I want something that makes me feel more like I'm a pirate in one piece and this is what I want. So she drew it, I adornished it, I embellished it, I think that's the word. Adornished. <laughs> I, saw it, I saw it to watch One Piece, man. But uh, you got, yeah, you gotta read it, man. It's so, so good. But, but, all right, can we when make a deal real quick before you yeah, continue? I'm in. I will read one piece, but you gotta you gotta watch you Hawk. I'll show. start tonight. That, that's it right there. <laughs> let's let's start tonight. I actually started watching Yu Yu show with Joyce. It's it's really good. I like Bot Botano, the girl. Botan. Botan. Yeah, she's yeah. like she's the Grim Reaper. Yeah, she's awesome. I like that. I like that concept that she's the Grim Reaper. But back to this uh, long drawn out explanation of the heart of the cards. Um, basically. What my theory is, is when you build a deck, you're giving that deck your energy. You're giving it your life essence. You're giving it your mana. time. You're giving it your mana, exactly. And and the decks use energy to run. So, I mean, it's a kind of, it's, you know, in terms of the laws of physics, it's somewhat balanced in the way that you perceive this from Newton's laws, more or less. But when you create that thing, you are, making something that can function and sort of in a way like live. And once you make a deck that really works and really functions, it can live along the side of other decks and compete with them and interact. I think that deck grows a heart. And once the deck grows a heart, then that's when you can activate the heart of the cards because that's when your heart is in the heart of that deck and that deck is alive and it's no longer just a deck. It's like a Pokemon. Like you have it along your side, you've like, you've leveled it up, you've given the EXP into it, you know, like you've evolved it, you've changed cards out, you have the side deck. Like there's all these things that make your deck living and once it has that heart, then you can like activate that heart. And I really don't think I would have ever thought about that concept if we weren't friends. Cause Bro, I feel where do you like- where you get your weed? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> I did do my undergraduate in California, so. <laughs> I, uh, but that was good. But I feel like, like playing cards with you, man. Like, not only have you activated a different level of skill that I like to interact with, but 
you know, you're a spiritual dude, like you like spiritual stuff. And I think when we first met, I think you kind of recognized that I could pick up and talk about some of those things. Well, but it actually like, when I met you, I actually got like deja vu, like I saw you before. So really? it's just like, I definitely like know this guy from like maybe like a previous life or something. I feel that man. So it's like, I very much did. it was just like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and it's cool. Cause I feel like you've really opened up this side of this game to me that it's not just a game. Like, you know, Evan, you seven says it's a lifestyle, but it really is a you know it's more than just community it's more than just a game it's more than just fun it's like this is a whole world that exists through creativity and interaction and business. that's what's cool about it business <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah i mean i think um i think thinking about thinking thinking around the box you know outside of the outside of just the deck box but like what goes into how this thing functions and exists. And, and it's so crazy to me, man. I mean, okay, so do you know, how many people do you think are on the team that make this game? What do you mean? Like the Bandai Dragon Ball Super Card Game team. How many people do you think are on that team? Probably a decent amount. How many do you think? Like, I don't know, man. Give me a number, throw something out there, roll the dice. Like how many people like get together and like design the game together? Yeah, yeah, we'll start with that. Probably like 30 plus. You know, it's gotta be like a decent amount of people in order to like come up with like all these different like. It's two guys. That's it? It's two guys. It's two guys that don't speak English and they design the entire game in an Excel sheet. They don't have any of the physical cards. They look literally at have an Excel sheet <laughs> that they built this game in. And I don't think this game is like a money making thing. I don't think this game is something where they're like, Oh yeah, let's like let's bank on, make bank on like this creative thing. I'm pretty sure it was like a guy from Yu-Gi-Oh and a guy from Magic that were like, "Yo, Bandai, we're good at making card games and we really like Dragon Ball. Like, can we use the IP to make a card game with this stuff?" And Bandai was like, "Sure." And now they have this tiny team that for the amount of people that are actually making the game and the profit margin that they create from what they sell, it's, it's, it's gotta be insane. It's gotta be totally, totally insane. And like the thing that's so wild about this game, and I've said this in some of the other things that I've, the, or the other episodes of In Joku's Pants, but like, it's basically like modern day Japanese woodblock printing. You know, they're creating these small pieces of art for us to appreciate. And not only are they art, but we get to interact with them. You know, like the fact that I can take a piece of cardboard Dude, card games are with, fire, man. with Android 17 on it and turn a bunch of energy sideways and slap it on a play mat and make you feel something in your gut. Like that's wild. That's crazy. These guys going crazy, man. I feel like, oh, I should be, in the, should be on the ban list. So oh, <laughs> Shimata, put this man on the ban list. <laughs> oh man. But, uh, but yeah, so, okay, uh, question for you. What has been your favorite deck to play in this game? Probably yellow Broly. Like Dude. Broly button. But oh, man. So good. It was I so like good. Broly when I lost button because it really just made me made me think differently and play a lot more conservatively and made me understand the game from a different perspective because you can't just be like, oh, I'm gonna tap out. My opponent's gonna like swing into me and then I have button to like untap all my energy and do stupid shenanigans. It's more like, okay, I I gotta be like, you know what I mean? I gotta make use of every little energy. Yeah, and, you have and, to manage you know, your resources. Respect the clap back. You have to resource, yeah. manage resources properly instead of just having something free that gives you the ability to do broken plays. Totally, I think I heard you saying the exact same thing about Bojack in Icarus. Yeah, you don't know. tap, don't tap out against Johnny. I, that's all I gotta say. <laughs> <laughs>
um, and sets you up for for uh, the Turles, right? Yeah. That's four things for one energy. That's like, you know. I mean, it's 400%. easily set up too, because like, like turn one, you have your multicolor. Turn right. two, you charge a, 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 extra, a, a card. extra card that's dead, and then, then you power you POS. The yep. And there you go. Yeah. Free repose, or well, one energy repose, one energy steadfast, and then. I think, I think there will come a time where POS will get limited to one. The card is really good. I think the card is. I can't believe in my other yellow strong. decks I was playing only three. Definitely a four of. Yeah, it's a it's a mandatory, especially with the new cards, because you're you're gonna pitch one and and uh, and you're gonna pitch one and charge one probably, you know. And another thing I like, like pretty cards like that, like the SPR looks so good. And when you get to put a pretty SPR in your energy, like I have I have zero issue charging Kefla turn. Yo, you just made me think. All right, so back to my favorite card. Okay. I will say one of my favorite cards has got to be Swift 2 Cooler. <laughs> like that card is so Swift good. Swift Retaliation Cooler? Yeah. I, I think, okay, all right, real talk. I think I might've been the one that put you onto that card. Yeah. You were actually, I was. yeah. I was, because we were playing Broly and like you were showing me the Mira stuff you could do with Broly and I was like, dog, like if you could counter counter on this, like you have enough energy for it that you just pay, play Mira for one and then you counter counter and put a double strike on that's GG's boys. And then I forgot to put Mira on my deck list. <laughs> <laughs> Swift but, uh, is a little cooler, man. But yeah, such a such a good card. It's cool. And, and it's, it's also funny you say that because I think my favorite interaction in the game is counter counter. And as much as I love battering laser, I think it's good that they got rid of it because I think for something to be that powerful, the counter a counter, you really do need to be tapping more energy for something that's that valuable. You know, especially with the amount of interaction and countering that there is in the game now, if there's gonna be something that counter counters, you gotta- um, Yo, can you water me, bro? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta pay, water the me. pay the cost to be the boss, you know what I mean? Thanks, bro. All right, let me get this, <laughs> let me get this waistband on here. Do you know what the uh, monkey is? Definitely another one of my favorite cards. The the ape the ape or yeah. drive sand instincts. You can just no uh, Raiders Warcry. Well, I do like Raiders Warcry, but uh, no uh, counter counter baby golden. Baby, Avenger. Oh yeah yeah. That like you could put like your opponent in these weird scenarios where like you just leave five energy open, and even if you don't have it, your opponent's gonna have to respect it. So yeah yeah. yeah. And that, that's actually you've taught me a lot about like how to properly play baby Hatchiak, you know. Yeah. Like unless you're about to die and your opponent's on low energy and there's no window for a counter counter, yeah. like you you can baby hatch safely and maybe buy. If a you game. know you're gonna hatch because your opponent has like it's trying to kill you next turn, you, you leave gotta, five energy you gotta open because they're gonna counter counter your, your baby and you want right. to counter counter their counter counter. Exactly. You know? Exactly. So but I guess the thing where it comes in danger is if you're uh, playing a Icarus player and they have six energy up because they could have run two coolers and that would be big. And then both coolers would resolve and they'd draw four cards. That would be wild. I think we might be getting to a world where that might be a thing that happens. I mean, your, your board would have to be like pretty ridiculous in order for that to be like relevant though. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Unless you're going for like a lethal swing. Yeah, well, I mean, I think at the point where you're counter countering, it's you're probably going for game, you know? There's an, if you're counter countering- I baby hatch, baby hatch might be like top two or, I don't know, I don't know what my favorite card is, but I just like so many cards in this game. Yeah, and, they, and there's- still Oh, I don't know what my favorite card is. What? God ceiling technique. <laughs> Word. I love that fucking card. This man, and the SPR looks lit. This man over here taps five for God ceiling. Tap five for God ceiling. <laughs> it's one of the best. Oh, you just moves thought you game. just dealt with my unison. Honestly, cool. people people think like, oh, okay, your unison's gone, right? Like, oh, all right, it's safe to play. Psych. <laughs> and everybody thinks that like everybody plays three as like a standard number. So I think right now it's the perfect time to play four. So you charge one purposely, and then in like the late game, when your opponent sees they use two of them, he, they're not gonna expect for you to have the fourth, and they're yep. gonna try and drop a bomb on you. Yep. Because people don't play more than three, and then you're like, I got the fourth, bruh. I was actually talking to Joey about this like two days ago, and he was saying, he made a really good point. He was like, he's like, there are times where I have, you know, I'm running three God Ceiling, and I just don't have the third, which means that there are gonna be times where I'm not even gonna have the fourth, which means that I need to run four. And I, that, that, that logic I can totally, totally get behind. Um, I think it makes sense. And you know, I think good players like himself and you also identify that sort of stuff. You know, like another thing, um, one of my friends, my buddy Kyle Bridgeford from Arizona, he's not big into the game, but he's good at card games. And we play, you know, I'll teach him when some new stuff comes out and we'll test a lot. And one of the things he told me was he was like, 
He was like, look at a card. If you're trying to figure out, you know, what to cut in your deck, look at the cards that are in your deck and count how many games of how many games you actually use that card, right? Like how many times you actually resolve a specific card. Interesting. And if you're not resolving that card, most games, I mean, there may be some matchups that are like, okay, this matchup is unwinnable if I don't have that card, right? Like turning the tides, I need turning the tides. I thought that I didn't need it and I thought it was fine. I feel but, like without it, the Icarus matchup is just unwinnable. Yeah, without it, the that's correct. The Icarus matchup is unwinnable and, um, and you have to, you also have to set up, like turning the tides, you can't just jam it down on when you have seven energy. Negative like, chief. If they have a board and they have blockers, like you're dead. You're yeah. just, you're gonna die on the They can also get tapped down by uh... the steadfast. Yeah. Well, no, it can't get tapped out by the steadfast because- Oh, it has to flag, my bad. Stuff. But but it can still, it can still, you know- Don't flame you, me in if, the comments. If, <laughs> if, you're in, if, you're play, if you're playing against blue, they can still baby hatch it. I mean, baby, baby golden avenger it. And if they baby golden avenger your crit body and you don't have a board set up, like, GG's buddy, nice try. And then of course, you're also gonna be hitting stuff off their life. So I feel like there's a lot of, I mean, it is like, I heard Johnny saying, he was like, this game's like 40 chests. Sure, those are short enough for me, my guy? I'll make them shorter. I'll cut them up, I'll cut them up. We're trying I, wanna to, see, I wanna see how long they're stand up for We're me. trying to boot some pants in here. <laughs> boot some pants and boot some pants in. All right, so you want them like here, hold this right there. You want them like here? Yeah. <laughs> this man's a bad man. I'm making some headbands too while I'm at it. All right, all right, all right. I'm all about the headbands. Dude, I had like the, you made me like a headband like a while ago and I rocked it for like a minute. Yeah. And well, then I lost this one it. For like 30 minutes. Um, do you know what the, do you know what the Buddhist monk said to the man at the hot dog stand? Put mustard on it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he said, please make me one with everything. Oh, I like that. <laughs> and then, uh, and he gave me a twenty dollar bill, and the uh, and the guy thought, the, and then the Buddhist monk was like, uh, was like, I just gave you a twenty. Can I get my change? And the guy thought the hot dog was saying was like, uh, sorry, buddy, change comes from within. Damn. <laughs> we ate some hot dogs today. That's deep. Look, Johnny's crying <laughs> over there. <laughs> I, had my, I had my first Italian hot dog today. I'm thinking about thinking about the universe, hot dog universe. Yeah, man. Italian hot dogs. If you haven't tried them, try them out. Pretty good, man. Hell yeah. Potatoes, hot dog, bread. It's not to like. Peppers. <laughs> What's mustard. not to like? <laughs> you know, who doesn't have a wiener in their mouth? <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing? I'm going to make like a... Do you want one that you like tie in the back? Or do you want like a, just like a... Rock we could have one that we could tie in the back. I'd be like a ninja, you know? Yeah, yeah. You want to rock like that? Or you want one, one that, what would you wear more? One that you just like slip over? Probably. Probably? Okay. I mean, you can make me, you can make me one now. I mean, whatever, I'll wear it. I'll make it for you, man. This for head, me? man? I'll make it for you. For your head. Your neck. Your neck. Um, all right, next question. No, it's not my neck. It's your it's neck. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Where the heck? He's your neck. That's it. If you guys don't know, my actual name is Jonic, J-A-N-A-K. It rhymes with Sonic, and it's a uh, it's a hard J. It's not a soft J. If you're wondering, but I like to say that like the Eastern European pronunciation of my name is your neck. You can say where the heck is your neck? I'm right here. I'm making a headband for my sensei. Hey man, if we didn't have necks. Oh, God. Gnarly. <laughs> Take it easy, man. Take it easy, eh? Take um, it easy. <laughs> all right, here's my next question for you. What do you think is in store for the future of this game? You were talking about rotation, but I don't know. I personally, and I think that I speak for the community when I say this, don't want rotation. Yeah. I definitely don't want it. Um, and I think stuff like Mythic Booster points in the direction that we're not gonna get a rotation. At the same time, like, you know, the. do you remember when uh, set, set 10 came out and they did have like a limited format where it's like you just play the set 10 stuff? Yeah, I like formats really, like, I like that. Like that was actually really fun. It was really fun because like, I literally built every single yeah, deck. Yeah, it's fun playing against, every deck. Yeah, playing against Sin Shenron like all day. It's yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh... Um, but yeah, like actually building everything and trying all the different stuff. Like I, I really enjoy that, but 
um, I think that it's important that there is a format that still allows access to the entire card pool. Like the entire card pool is the, good. The problem, the problem with the stuff they're making is the arch types that they're making are kind of lackluster. And one, their win cons, their matchup spread, the overall impact on the game with these new archetypes is just not strong enough for them to even have a place in the meta. Right. And then you're releasing all these like fundamentally strong cards that could just be thrown into decks that were already broken. Right. And then just continue to be broken because of these new cards that just came out. Right. If you make these cards specific to certain archetypes, then you could have more decks in the meta. It's true, it's true. But I also think that it's cool that they're doing it in a way where it's like, oh yeah, I really like this leader. I love playing this leader. And now I get to play like, like if I if, if we're playing Super Smash Brothers and all of a sudden they're like, you can't play Captain Falcon anymore. I wouldn't, I wouldn't play the game anymore, you know? And like, I love Soul Striker. I've literally been saying, playing Soul Striker since it was printed. And the fact that I can play but, uh, a leader. You gotta pour out, you gotta pour some out for the, the King Vegeta players out there. Cause they. <laughs> <laughs> They yeah, dirty. yeah, they uh, <laughs> that that was not maybe not the right text to change on that one, but um, but yeah, you know I've been playing the leader since he since he came out. He's super fun and it's cool that like, you know, he's it's it's definitely understood. That, you know, Nats hasn't happened yet, but he's got a spot at Nats and there's a good shot that. Talk about Soul Striker, right? Soul Striker, and there's a good chance that he could bring it home also for New Jersey in, in my hands maybe. So, trip him, King. Um, but you know what I mean? I think it's cool that they are building stuff that it's like, okay, here's this really cool card. You don't just have to play this leader to play it. But I think if there was an option that was like, you know, shops can hold, shops can hold a, a regular event and then they can also hold a limited to Unison Warrior event, right? Which is what they're doing at Nats the second day. There's, you can play in an event where you only use cards with the Unison Warrior stamp on them. And I think Do you think the, the game will ever have like a limit to how many cards you can play per turn? like battle cards no i don't think so i don't think that they will change it. i think that's one of the things that makes this game i know they really they they cut back on like free play and they hit a lot of free play cards which was good i think that was necessary um here's a headband see if it fits sweet that sh on. let's see how it looks sweetie 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 sh big as big as big as i'm gonna hem these shorts for those hot thighs hot thighs baby um, how's that look damn bro Jeez. Sensei. Sensei. Don't, you know what, you know how to say, um, you're welcome in Japanese. Is it like, arigato or something like that? No, that's, uh, thank you. Oh, well, f*** me then. Uh, <laughs> almost. <laughs> it's, uh, doitashimaste, which sounds like, don't touch my mustache. Don't touch my mustache. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> hey, take it easy, man. All right, these shorts are almost hemmed up. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I think it's cool that, that you get cards that are, um, you know, like this Kefla card. I would be bummed if I couldn't play it in Soul Striker. And the fact that I can play, you know, it kind of has Soul Striker printed on it in the fact that two of, two of the energy are blue, right? So you untap two blue energy, you just keep that yellow. Yeah, I just wish they made the archetypes in this like these last two sets a little bit stronger, you know? Like I really like the Jiren deck from last set. It's really strong, it can compete with like the top decks, but it's it's just it's just not strong enough. Like it needs something else. Jiren or Jiren, Red Jiren. Yeah. Very good deck, very strong, very consistent. Yeah, it needs a secret rare that's designed. It for needs it. yeah, it needs some Yeah, if I, if I had a secret rare it would it would be really, really good. But then again, like, like if they gave Jiren like a card that gave my board barrier, like that, I'd be busted. The fact that I'd be able to swing with Zenith and and my board yeah. without it being interrupted, because there's so many cards that just kind of do do on you when you Ke try to like Kefla's ignoring barrier. make efficient plays. But I think also what's uh what's really cool is like I don't like decks that are like okay you go down this line and this is the line you play. Like Red Broly was really fun at first because I felt like you could kind of pivot on like which you play, Red but Bro it is Red Broly, Red Broly was never fun. You have to play each <laughs> one. It was fun for like the first couple weeks I played it, and then I was like, okay, this is like if you if something gets interrupted fully, like it's just over. Yeah, I remember I was playing Vegito against you. you made me cry. You took like. 20 minute turn making this massive board. I'm just like, cool. <laughs> so much fun. So but, much uh, but what's cool about Jiren is Jiren is similar to Red Broly in the way it's not swapping, it's evolving. But the way that you can evolve 
is like you have two options. It's not just you play the three drop, then the four drop, then the five, whatever. It's like you can go from the four into the five, or the five, or the, and then the four. four five, you can go over the one into the four, seven, the eight, one into the, the nine, five, ten, the ten, the ten. Exactly. But all of those lead up to Zenith, right? So like you have these options of ways that you can stagger, and the staggering and playing of the cards aren't interrupting your opponent's hand, they're interrupting your opponent's board. So somebody like swings in at your unison with like a 15 and then you evolve off the unison effect and neg that thing. Now they're gonna have to combo up into that and that's like a bigger neg already. So. The, the deck is really strong, but with the existence of Gogeta Xeno, like the deck just doesn't really have like, uh, it's like a, it's like a solid, super solid spot in the meta as an yeah. aggro deck. Cause I, I, this is a hot take, but I think Red June shits on Cell Surge. And Cell Surge is a really popular Yeah, deck. no, I think I think Red Aggro in general, Dookie's on Cell Surge. I don't yeah. think Cell Surge has a great way of dealing with it because you get so many cards in hand so fast, they can't quite discard your hand fast enough. And I think Sublet was saying it really well that like, if you're not going to Nats prepared to play against Cell Surge and Red Aggro, like get ready to scoop, you know? Um, but yeah, I like, do think that there you will have, be- like, these, Sometimes you have like these expectations or like all the decks you're gonna see and you're like, I'm gonna be playing against like Icarus all day. And then you end up playing against like, Bulma, and you're like, what is this shit, you know? Yeah, like set seven to Masu. Yeah, set seven to Masu. <laughs> wow. But it is not, so people will be playing efficient decks. Yeah. Some people might be, you know, lean more towards the fun aspect and play more like fun decks. Like I was talking to Imani about that. He says he, he's, he would have more fun if he played like a more fun deck. So, you know. Yeah, and at the end of the day, I mean like, okay. The prizing is bonkers. Like, it would be sick to win the prizing. And I think, like, the only reason I really, really want to win Nats is so when I go back on Monday and see my patients on Tuesday, I can tell them I'm not just your dentist. I'm also the national Dragon Ball Super Card Game champion. And then that will have, make them have a lot more faith in my ability to take care of their teeth. That's hot. <laughs> That's fucking guy. <laughs> Um, but no, I mean, I, 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 I do like weird flexes like that. You know, it is fun for me to tell people I'm a dentist because it's kind of unbelievable, but I do it at the end of every one of my videos. Anyway, um, these are you your gotta, your dental tooth hands. tip it. got to get a dental tooth tip it. Cut um, the tape. I got to put these on. No, you're going to put... Uh, it's going to well, be so nudity. No, you got to put them on. Actually, it's the, yeah, just put them on. Just put them on. I'll, I'll, I'll block it out. I'll block it out with the fabric. Get back there. Get by Goku. I'll give you a drop cloth. We'll keep it PG. Drop cloth. Okay. I don't want people to get scared. Here, yeah, I'll man. hold this up. I don't want my schmeet on the internet. <laughs> schmeet. <laughs> get in those. Let me know. Let me know when you're changed, and then I'll like. Steve, stop trying it. to sneak a peek, bro. Sneak a peek. The schmeet's only for my girlfriend. <laughs> <sighs> this is the changing room. This is the Joku DMD Shoku changing room. <laughs> I'm nude. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> What did the egg say to the cup of boiling water? Oh, you make me hard. Sorry, it's gonna take me a minute to get hard. <laughs> I just got laid by a chicken. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ready? Hold on, hold on. I gotta, I gotta tuck in the shirt. Ready too. for the big reveal? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's it right there. Ready Look at those. For it? You ready for it? Hey, this man's about to go rollerblading in Miami. <laughs> you, got the, you got the beatbox on. <laughs> All my girls get down. Get down. That's serious, man. <laughs> is, is that the right length? Did, good, you want man. Them, did you want them a little shorter? I want them a little tighter. Tighter. Because like, if I take these to the gym and I squat on these, my shmeet's popping out, bro. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they're gonna be beach shorts. Hell yeah. All right, so we'll uh, we'll continue this part. I'm gonna post up over here and we'll get, Steve, you wanna come like a little closer for the, we'll do this part where we're like talking to each other here. This game is Dragon Ball, right? There aren't that many people that come to this game and they're like, I really don't like Dragon Ball, I just like the game. I know maybe a handful of those. Yeah, there's actually some people that I know, Chris specifically, yeah, Chris that is, like, not never actually Dragon Ball. watched it. Yeah, but he likes the game. Yeah. And it's a cool game, but like, I think what is so cool about this game is it, it, whether you like Goku or you like Vegeta, like you like one of those guys in Dragon Ball. You're not like, I hate Goku and Vegeta and I only like Krillin. There's not many of those people, but like you're either kind of on one team. You're like on the Goku team or on the Vegeta team, or you might like both of them. But if you are into one of those characters, it means that your moral compass kind of aligns with one of those characters. 
and that comes into play in the way that people play this game. So like, I play the, I feel like the way that I play this game, I align with Goku because I'm not looking to win. I'm looking to get better. You know, when we were upstairs training and um, you were like, oh, I should have done something different. I wasn't sitting there being like, no, like you have to do it that way. I was like, please do it as optimally as possible because I want to get whacked as hard as possible so that I can get better. It's not going to make me get better if I sit here and just like win a game, right? But like if I get it packed in and you are like training me, that's how I get stronger. I don't get stronger by playing worse plays. I get stronger by playing better plays. And that's something that I really learned from Goku. You know, like he is the kind of guy that just like wants to be the strongest and wants to- Bro, anybody, anybody who's like a nerd and grew up with like animes and certain things, like there are certain aspects of your personality and stuff like that that, or just attributes that you have as a person that you can take from, or you have taken from just watching these things growing up. Yeah. Like if it wasn't for Vegeta, I, Vegeta, I would have never like, like started working out, you know? Like I used to be pretty beefy. I'm more, you know, I'm getting a little older, so I stopped, you know, you know, spending my time at the gym so much, but uh, you know, I used to be pretty chunky. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Still am, I just wear big shirts. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you I'm know I'm only like, chunky where it counts. Wait, so do you, do you think you- <laughs> <laughs> PG, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you align more with Goku or Vegeta? I like them both. Yeah. Um, I like Goku's personality and his easygoingness. And he's like stupid, but he's not. Like yeah. he pretends, he kind of like plays dumb, but he- He's like a know? playful idiot, but he's a fighting genius. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, somebody could walk up to him and be like, this guy's an idiot. And then he's like, actually, I could wax you because I know how to stand with no openings in my stance, you know? I think that's kind of one of the reasons why I like looking like this and being a dentist is because when people see me, they're like, who is this clown? Yeah. I'm like, actually, I'm a doctor. <laughs> yeah, a good message for people watching out there. So don't worry about what people think about you. Dress however you want. Be yourself. Do what you enjoy and what you love. In Joku's pants. That's all that matters. In Joku's pants. You know? That's right. And always, always wash your hands. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think like, I think that's the thing that's really cool is like this game doesn't just bring it, you know, bring all the things that we talked about, but like it really, um, it really, sh it really gives people an opportunity to explore the parts of themselves that they align with in a mental and psychological way with themselves. And that's why I think Cell Surge players at Nats are gonna be the worst people because Cell is awful. It's an awful character, dude. He just straight up comes back and kills Trump. Uh, anybody who anybody who plays hand control is a villain in my eyes. <laughs> yeah, that's, I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree. It's like you just like there's there's people that like yeah. playing tennis with a partner, and then yeah. there's people that like hitting a ball. Shout out to Danny. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> um, anyway, let's wrap up this half. And you guys make sure to check out, I'm gonna put the link in the description below to El Topo Loco's channel. Make sure to give them a subscription. They have great content, really. We gotta put some more stuff. stuff on. I know we've been lacking a little bit, you know. But, you know, we're all prepping for Nats and you getting know. our stuff ready, but we'll do part two on their channel. So we'll be back over there. Thanks yeah. for coming by. Oh, I can't end without doing a dental tooth tip. Um, my dental tooth tip today would be the reason why, I know I say a lot, get a power toothbrush, a Sonicare power toothbrush, but the reason why you want to get a Sonicare power toothbrush is because the newer brushes have a little light on them that has a head and an indicator that tells you when you need to replace the head. There's no other toothbrushes out there that are manual toothbrushes that tell you that they need to be replaced. And it's important to replace your brush head at, this, at the right time. So pay attention to that light. Go get a Sonicare toothbrush. Come by Dental. I'll hook you up with a power toothbrush and make sure you're using that thing twice a day for two minutes. I'm Joku DMD, and I'll see you over on El Topo Loco's channel.